everybody, this is Brian, and this is uh, our 137th uh, Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. We're going to be hopefully wrapping up the high-performance TCP server design. This will be part six. I'm showing you this so that you know that there's five other parts to this series. So if you're just now tuning in, please watch the, what is it, three and a half, four hours of coding that I've done. Um, yeah, and I've done 130, now 37 tutorials on Qt, so um, be sure to check those out. Now, I kind of noticed there's a thumbs down here. Somebody disliked this video, and I generally don't have a problem with that, but I don't see a comment from the person who disliked it. I'm like, that bums me out, because if you don't like it, I really want to know why you don't like it. Maybe you didn't like it because I spent, you know, the first two minutes of the video rambling, much like I've done with this one. So. Anyways, let's just jump right in. All right, uh, quick primer on where we're at. We've made our TCP server, which you know has the connections and the individual connection, which is a wrapper around the socket. And then we've inherited that, and we've made our HTTP server and HTTP connection. Now, this doesn't actually send the file at this point. That's what we're going to accomplish in this video. Um, the last video, we did this rate transfer class. And that might actually be why they gave it a thumbs down, but whatever. So the whole point of this class was to transfer from one QIO device to another QIO device at a set rate. Hence, that's how a web server works. When you go out to whatever you're downloading and you go to download a file, you're not going to do it at your full bandwidth. You're going to do it at a throttled limit. I think, for example, Apache's default limit is 15K a second or something like that. I might be wrong. Anyways. So that's what we're going to do with this video, is we're going to connect the rate transfer class into the HTTP connection so that we can actually, ta-da, serve files like a web server. Now I have in our little documents directory, I have a website folder, which just has an index page, a uh, 81 meg test file, and then a uh, images folder that just has an image in it so we can actually see this thing working. So without further ado, let's just dive right into the code here and start coding. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to give this thing a good build just to make sure. Uh, I'm going to give it a rebuild. Just to make sure there's no little bugs that are going to catch us later on. There shouldn't be because we've rebuilt this like 400 million trillion times. And while we're waiting, oh, there it goes. There's a couple unused parameters, not a big deal. Um, in case you're wondering why I actually want the bad feedback, because I want to do better. Um, there was actually, it was kind of funny, there was a fight that broke out on one of my videos, and I had to go in there and kind of break it up because somebody gave it a thumbs down, and then somebody else came in and was like, who the F gave this a thumbs down? And I was like, dude, chill. Everybody's entitled to their opinion here. But he was very, very unhappy that somebody gave my video a thumbs down, which I was, I was actually kind of impressed. I was like, wow. Alright, so transfer. Maybe that's why he gave it a thumbs down. I can't spell. So we're going to make a pointer to our, our rate transfer class. Um, and basically we're just going to just do a little double checking here. Um, remember we separated these, you know, just with this, this empty line here so that we know these are going to connect to that rate transfer class that we just made. So we're going to get started, transferred, finished, and transfer error. And I don't remember if we actually implemented transferred. Um, we can actually jump in there and look real quick. We did not. So let's actually implement that real quick. Oh, what am I looking for here? transfer. There we are. Gosh, my eyes got like all weird. So we're going to write emit transferred and I think that's a qint64. Yeah, so we're going to have to change that a little bit here. In case you're wondering why I do a qint64, whoa, is because that is the uh, an integer big enough to actually hold the size of a file. So if you have like an 80 gig file, it's not going to fit in an int. It's going to have to go into a qint64. 
All right, so let's double check that. Transferred 64. Transferred 64. Let's go into our rate controller here. Transferred. Where's our signal? Yeah, here it is. Make sure. Let's give this another build just in case. And drum roll. Maybe. Possibly. Probably. Ta-da! Alright, so we got a good build. We can start fleshing this thing out. So, we have got our signals and slots. We've got our class. We've got our pointer to it. We can go in here and start fleshing this out here. And if you remember, I commented that out because I was looking at my notes. So where is send file here? There we go. To do, make a rate controller. Well, we've done that, so let's start banging this bad boy out here. All right, so we want to check to make sure we got an actual socket. If not, we're going to just, you know, say, whoop, forget you, I'm done. We're going to make a new Q file. Now you've noticed that I'm making these as pointers. I'm doing that just strictly out of habit. They really don't have to. Um, I, I tend to do things in pointers in case I want to pass them around. So instead of copying an object, I'm copying just a pointer. You could always do a reference to or whatever. But um, And you also notice that we're setting the parent. We can do that because this guy, the HTTP connection, lives on the individual thread. I shouldn't say the individual thread, the worker thread that we've created. Let's just say created. My brain is just mush. I had a really long day at work, so I'm like, Ugh. And through the magic of copy and paste, I'm going to save a little bit of time by just pasting the connection strings in here. We're just connecting the signals and slots. Rather than you watching me type for 10 minutes straight, you're just going to copy and paste those in there. Notice how we are just, uh, we're not doing the cute direct connection, we're just doing an auto connect. And that's because this all lives up on the same thread, so we don't have to do the, the cute connection or the auto connect or whatever. It's just, we're doing the default auto connect. All right, so. So we're going to take the rate transfer, we're going to set the source to the file. And actually, before we do that, we should actually try to open the file. So if we cannot open the file, we're just going to close the socket. We're going to say, now at this point, we've already sent the 200 OK header, and then we're immediately closing the socket. So the client's going to freak out and go, whoa, our connection dropped. So we're going to set the source. We're going to set the destination, which is going to be our socket. We're going to set the rate. And we're going to set the transfer size. Did 
Did I not do that? Hmm. No, I didn't. Let me double check. I don't think we did a set size. No, we didn't. We did a set rate. All right, so we're just going to set this to an arbitrary number here because this is our web server. We're just going to do this. We're going to say 1K is the maximum size. And then we're going to say queue debug. We want a lot of queue debugs in here because we want to see what's going on. Let me actually. Damn you, cursor. There we go. So we know that the rate transfer class will transfer from one QIO one QIO device to another. So all we're doing is we're setting the source, setting the set destination, the rate, the size, and then we're just going to kick this bad boy off and let the rate transfer class do what it needs to do. All right. So before we do that, we're going to do m oops m response remove code. Now we're doing that because in our, I think it's bytes written, yeah, right here, we're checking for a code. So if we have a code and it's 200, we're going to send the file. Otherwise, we're going to, you know, check for a 404. So we don't want to check the code while we're sending the file because it'll start trying to send the file again and again and again and again every time we write a packet. We don't want that. So let's do this. Last but surely not least, start. We're going to actually start the transfer. Now there's a couple little gotchas here. When we look at finished, this is the rate transfer when it's finished. Notice how we're closing the file and closing the socket. We have to do that to flush the buffer. You could call flush but some operating systems don't actually do that automatically. And if there's an error we can, might as well just do it there too. Alright, let's give this a good build. And there's a couple little other snippets of magic we need to do here. We want to set the rate. I need a good rate here. I'm going to set it to 4K a second. And we're going to set the root. I've already got the root set up. This is just going to be our little website here. Now, notice how there's no, no slash. It doesn't really matter because we have the code in there to check. But So let me go out there. And this is our slash home root show, which is just the username on this box uh, documents website. And it's going to look for the existence of this index.html. So it's going to actually serve that file. So you know what? Let's just run this, see what happens. Let's be brave. All right, so oh. <laughs> yeah, we still got our code in there. We should take that out because we don't want that. I was like, I saw this debug and went, what is all this transferring crap? This is from our previous tutorial, my bad. Let me actually go back out here. All right. Make sure we didn't blow anything up here. All right, so we're going to start this. Now I'm going to jump over to a browser here. I'm going to get a little creative with this so we can see the browser and the debug window at the same time. And we're just going to connect to localhost port 2000. Hmm. And it didn't work. Processing yet. Let's see what happened here. Hmm. Tick tock, tick tock. What happened? Processing get. Processing get handle request state change to closing unconnected. Why is it doing that? 
obviously, ladies and gentlemen, I forgot something. So let's start digging through the code and see what I forgot. And this is why these tutorials are an hour long, because I cannot remember to do everything. So, all right, so we're going to write the response. This is why we put QDebug statements in here. put this in here and down in the bytes written because we're checking to see here we're gonna actually send the file Do this code equals, and ironically, this is what I get a lot of feedback about. People are like, "Well, I love watching you try to figure out your mistakes," and I'm like, "Grr, it's so frustrating." But I guess that's you know part of life here. So this, we'll say attempting to send file. last you. There we go. I'm willing to bet the problem is in there somewhere. Let's double check our output here. Hey, watch this. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Processing get processing request. Let's actually put another Q debug in here. Q debug. Writing header to socket. And that's handle request. So we know we're handling the request at some point. But we're saying state change disconnected. See, this is the this is what's going on right here. Abstract socket closing state, meaning we are closing the socket, not the client. And then we're disconnecting, and then we're removing, and then we're deleting. So it's something that we're doing, or more to the point. Ah, client is requesting a directory. Here's the problem right here. Okay. Client is requesting a directory. Oh, maybe if we just, you know, like put that little slash in there, that might actually be helpful. All right, because I'm willing to bet it was shooting out of 404 not found, but we didn't see that because we didn't have the Q debug statements in there. Silly me. Let's try this again. Start and nothing. Code 404. Why are we getting code 404? Writing header to socket, code 404, disconnecting, so it's doing what it's supposed to, but it still thinks it doesn't have the file here. I'm willing to bet we have a very simple problem and I am just overlooking it. That's probably the issue here. So fi set file index file, index files actually will plus that. Let's go out there and make sure the file actually exists index HTML, index HTML. The one thing we're not seeing here is clients requesting a directory. Bingo. And then it's instantly writing header to socket. So it's not processing this and it's not processing that. It's just immediately writing header. So 
actually it is processing this because codes 404 not found. So, qfile info, qfile info exists. Let's just say, just for giggles. All right, so key warning. We're going to say index files missing and index file. And let's see what we're actually doing here. This suddenly became a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I do apologize, but we will get this going. Huh? Index files missing. Slash slash index. It's trying to send root slash index. So there's a problem there right there. As my plumber always says, oh, there's the problem. It's leaking. All right. So we obviously need to set the root directory. So where is set root? We're not setting root there. That's part of the problem. Or we are there. But I'm not seeing root set to. See, there's the HTTP server root set to, but we're not handling it in the actual connection object. So, yeah, ha, yeah, see, there's our to-do, derp. It helps if you look for the to-do, right? Set rate, now I feel really stupid. So, if I just wasted however many minutes of your life, well, I'm sorry, you cannot have those minutes back. You're just going to have to suffer through it. But point in case, that's why you have a lot of Qdebug statements in there. So you can very quickly kind of go through without setting breakpoints and all that other stuff. You can just figure out what's going on. Now, this absolutely should unequivocally run this time. And if not, I'm probably going to throw something across the room. There we go. Now, you see how that smiley face was loading slowly? That's our rate controller at work. Let's do that again. Hopefully it's not cached. Yeah, you see it slowly, slowly chunking like 1990 or something on the internet with dial up and AOL. I never actually used AOL, but that's imagine, if you will, what it looked like. That's how you throttle the connection. Now, point in case, if I click this download, it's going to download this test.zip, which is an 81 meg file. So we'll just do that. Show our download here. And you can see how it's transferring in 4096 chunks. And you can see how it's set at 3.6 kilobytes per second. So let's go back. Well, no, there was seven there for a second there. So what did we say our rate was? Anybody? 4096. So we're saying about 4K a second is our max rate on this thing. And you can see it's staying under 4K a second. That is why we did the prediction in there. Um, once in a while, you will see that shoot up in size. A um, couple little caveats. Let me actually cancel that. And you can see how the file transfer error, destination device not open, not writable, blah, blah, blah. We're going to clear that. Let's actually fiddle with this thing a little bit. Let's see if we can really, you know, let's set it to 15K as the rate. So we're going to set it 15K a second. And let's try this again. Start. All right, let's see how the smiley face loads much faster. Still saw a little bit of chunking because we're only at 15K a second. If we try to download, we'll see now that we're at around, around the 15K mark. Um, it's not perfect. It does jump over 15K, but you can see how it's definitely throttling it. And it would take us two hours to download this file. Now, we do this because that timer will you know, sit there and wait for its single shot to fire off. And it allows other clients to get a slice of the time, slice of the network bandwidth and do their thing. So let's clear that. Whoops. Let's, let's cancel that and clear this. And let's just give it some gigantic number. 150K. Actually, let's just more. 
More is better, right? Start. Refresh this. Smiley face appears almost instantly. And you can see how, whoops, it's going much faster. We only have 48 seconds instead of two hours because we're going a little over a megasecond, right? And you can see the window down here is going much faster. So that, ladies and gentlemen, how, how you throttle a network connection. Um, I'm going to actually cancel this. So that was a long series, man, but we covered a lot of ground. Um, I kind of want to do a quick recap of what we've done. That way, if this is the only video in the series you've watched, you can kind of pick up where we've left off and not spend three some odd hours watching these videos. All right, so we started off, we made our TCP classes. Um, they just inherit QTCP server. Then the connections basically keeps count of our connections and does some memory management in the background, does some cleanup. And then the connection object itself, the TCP connection, this is just pretty much a wrapper for the QSocket. From that, we can inherit, and you can make all sorts of things with this, right? So we could make a, an HTTP server, an echo server, an FTP server. Excuse me, that was rude. Um, we could do all sorts of things. The rate transfer class is reusable because it uses QIO devices. You could, you know, say you want to make a web server, an FTP server, an SSH server, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, some, some pitfalls and caveats here. Um, you will need to run this as root if you're running on a port lower than 1024. Um, or if you're in Windows, you'll need to run it as an administrator. Um, yeah, you may also need to add an exemption to the Windows firewall. Uh, I have not tested this on Mac, but I'm going to assume it'll work fine. And you know what? Just for giggles, let's test this with Siege. Let's... All right, let's start this. Let's load up Siege here. We're going to pop 800 connections at a time. And you see how now it's returning 200 OK? And it's you can see it's just like going freaky crazy down here. Now it's actually transferring that file. Like if we control C this, maybe if we can find some in here, TCP connections, disconnecting client error, ah. yeah, rate transfers. So you can see because there's rate transfers in our debug, we're actually transferring the file over to Siege. See, rate set to, size set to, starting file transfer, start called, file transfer, da 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 writing to destination, blah, 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 blah. So our siege statistics for that little amount of time was 12,000 hits. So we actually transferred that indexed HTML 12,000 times. We transferred 6.14 megabytes a second over 11 seconds. Uh, transaction rate, yeah, self-explanatory, concurrency, success, all of them, zero failed. Longest transfer was 1.82 seconds. Siege is an amazing utility for stress testing web servers, by the way. Um, this is not, how do I want to put this? This code is not the next um, Apache server. It's not the next IIS, but it's a good example of how you can handle high volume, large amounts of connections and traffic. Um, and it's, it's scalable in the sense that you can handle bursts of traffic from you're at one or two connections to suddenly you're at 5,000 connections. Um, but, you know, you should do things the correct way and put them behind load balancers and things like that. So, in closing, um, I've done these tutorials about the TCP server because it floods my inbox. It's by far the number one question I get is, hey, I don't understand TCP servers. Your tutorials really didn't cover it well. Or, how come my you know server won't handle more than 100 connections? You should be aware, because I'm going to make the assumption that you've skipped the other videos and you've gone straight to the finale here. You should be aware that this is going to be limited based on your operating system. For example, let me just try to bring it up here. If you're on a Linux Unix derivative, um, it's U limit. Whoops. I think it's dash n. There it is. U limit uh, dash n displays that I have 1024 file limit. This the maximum number of files that I can open. I'm not sure if that's per user or per application. It might be per user. You can increase that, but you do so at your own peril. And then there's other things, like uh, you may actually find the command to increase it 
but then find that there's some other file that limits the number of sockets or limits the number of connections and it's it's very very much off your OS for um, stress testing purposes I was capping this out on my Linux box at around 900 connections and on my Windows box at about I think it was 8,000 connections the reason is Windows 7 has a higher file limit basically and it uses um, IOCP instead of hard files so it doesn't mean Windows better you can definitely increase the limit in Linux I just I haven't done it just because I have no interest in screwing around with my Linux box in that manner all right questions comments concerns feel free to ask um, I try to visit the video but you'd be better off going to the Void Realms Facebook group um, there's like almost 300 of us out there and uh, the source code for this and all other tutorials will be on my website voidrealms.com go under tutorials cute and it's going to be way 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 at the end here and it will be the source code and you notice I've got you know part one through and I'll put six out here tonight and so you can see the progression of the code um, I should note this site is 100 percent funded off your donations um, so if you found this useful especially if you're a business and you're going to use this code to build your next latest and greatest thing please feel free to donate all the funds that get donated go into either a pizza or b paying for the website honestly 99 percent of it goes to the website except for last year where i actually donated a sizable chunk of it to charity just because i got more donations than what i could use all right that's it thanks for watching